Yeah. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast. Amen. Let me cut that off real quick. Amen. That's God. Okay, that's it. It wasn't a play on its own. Hey, y'all, welcome to the broadcast. This is When Christian Speak Talk Radio. This is His Abounding Grace with Minister Van. I see that she's on the line already with us. Praise the Lord, Minister Van. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's sounding good there. <laughs> Bless God. Bless God. We're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. Uh, do have some, uh, the Lord, how are you? Hey, doing fine, ma'am. We're doing fine. We're doing okay. All is well. It's good to have you uh, live again. Y'all, what's one hand clap? This is a little hand clapping moment, you know? Let me see if I can find it. Applause right here. Live again. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Amen. 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 Again, this is when Christian Speak Talk Radio. Cut that down. This is when Christian Speak Talk Radio. Uh, today's uh, broadcast, of course, is His Abounding Grace with Minister Van. We're about to get started in a few minutes. And um, I just want to give you a quick announcement. Uh, of course, you know, the Abounding Grace broadcast comes on at, uh, at comes on every Tuesday at 7 p.m. with Minister Van. And then declaring the finished work with Reverend Pat Randall. That's at Thursday at 12 noon. Of course, then we got Friday Night Joy with myself and friends. This Friday, we have B.J. Gianni. She's a, um, a, a model slash um, actress slash business woman slash uh, all the above mother of uh, all the above a mighty woman God that we were coming and um, joining uh, sharing some different things with us of course then stronger together with Sister Valerie and myself that's on Sundays at 7 p.m. and every fourth Saturday we have the apostle the, the apostle Prophet Carla Johnson and she does a broadcast called the Alabaster Box amen and that's at 7 p.m. amen we do want to continue to remind you about going to our website, whenchristianspeak.com, and check out some of the things that we got going on there. And um, what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and give it over to Minister Van and let her get started. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I know. Amen. Uh, Minister Van, are you there? Okay, I can't. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's play some music. And let's um, try to get rid of some of this echo because I think it's coming on my end. Hey, Amen. I'm here. Then, Praise God. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you the I... mic. <laughs> you got it from here, and I'll try to find out what else is going on, okay? Amen. Amen. All right. Um, can it's, you play some music? And I think I need to. Yeah, I yeah, think okay. there's echo on both ends. Okay. All right. No problem.
Amen. We're back on the air. Praise God. I think we work out whatever kinks we had going on. Cut this off real quick. Amen. This is When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Amen. We are broadcasting live from the Washington, D.C. area. Today's broadcast is called His Abounding Grace with Minister Van. Praise God. Minister Van, are you with us? Okay. Well, we continue on. Um, like I said, I want you to check out our website and uh, with Christianspeak dot com. We got a lot of different things going on on that website. We have a, a, a section that we call books, music, and coffee. <laughs> we we are, we're in connection with Amazon dot com where we try to do the uh, little individual cups, the K cups. Man, I love them K cups of coffee. Man, I tell you, give me that and some music and a Bible, I'm good to go. Amen. So check us out on the, on, on the uh, on the website when Christians speak. Don't forget that our Facebook page we have two. We have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. I mean, you can check us out that way too. And um, we're ready. We we got a lot of things going on. Don't forget. Amen. We have two. We have a Facebook. Amen. Bless God. Okay, um, like I said before, God is good, man, and I'm just just want to just glorify Him and praise Him, and um, give Him all the honor. You know, uh, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, all I can do is say Amen and bless God. Especially when I th- start thinking about how far I've come in my life, you know, from a person that had a stroke that survived all that, and God is about. To, Alive, kept him alive for such a time as this, man. I did not see this coming two years ago, of course, amen. So we just want to glorify God for this. Sometimes, you know, you just got to go back and think about all the good things that God has done for you. How many times He spared your life, you know, and how many times He just love on you <laughs> in spite of you and stuff. And be grateful for those I things, amen. 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 Be grateful for those things. Everything He's saying, saying it twice. Love on you. Yeah. I know he's trying to get it together. I know he is. Amen. You know I can hear you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. But I tell you what, we're going to play a little bit more music, and then I'm going to see what we got going on. We're going to get this right, y'all. This, the, that mean, the, you know what this means? This means that, that Mr. Van has a great word for us today. And the enemy is trying to do his thing, but the devil is a liar. Amen. He is a liar. Amen. 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 Come on, use your key. Use your key. So good, God is so good. 
Amen. Minister Van, are you with us? Praise God. Oh, great. <laughs> that Amen. sounds much Praise better, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We're gonna work this out. We're gonna work it out. Amen. What we're we gonna I do now? Praise now? God. Amen. I can I can hear you. Amen. We're gonna go ahead and give it over to you. Um, let you do the prayer and go ahead and get started. Okay. Oh, you want to? <laughs> let me pray. Let me pray. Okay. How's that? <laughs> Father God, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you, God. Thank you for all your grace and your mercy and your love. Thank you for your long-suffering, God. Thank you, God, Lord Jesus, uh, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for doing great and wonderful things in our life. Thank you for sparing us time after time after time again. Thank you even for the snow, God, for even the snow has purpose, God. Thank you, God, for every single miracle that you have performed in our life ever, God, even the ones that we don't even know about. Thank you for how you, you have been a blessing to us, Lord Jesus, that you have saved us, that you have brought us to this occasion. Now, Father in heaven, we give this broadcast to you, and we ask you to come in and take over it, God. We pray right now that you begin to make every piece of equipment work the way that you have ordained it to work, God, that if the word might go out into all the people. And begin to speak life and not death, God. To begin to speak joy. Begin to speak all those things that are necessary, Lord, that the people of God and the, the world might know just how much you love them. But you love them so much that you gave your son. And the son loved us so much that he gave his life. And then he called us friends, God. And we are grateful for this. So, God, reach into the airways right now for those that are listening live and for those that be listening on Facebook and other uh, other social media, God. We pray that you begin to touch their heart now in the name of Christ Jesus. We pray that you begin to heal, begin to deliver, begin to restore hope, begin to do whatever is necessary. For truly, this is all about you and none about us, God. That you might get all the glory, God. We pray for families to be re- reunited, God. We pray for sons and daughters, Lord Jesus, to be come back to their parents, God. We pray for love, unadulterated love to take place in the people of God's life, God. That we might look at each other totally different. That we might begin to exhort one another and encourage one another and lift up one another and remind each other that we've been bought with a price. Holy Spirit, come. Come with all your might and all your glory. Begin to change the atmosphere. Begin to do a paradigm shift within this great country, within this broadcast today. We give you, Minister Van, right now, God. You got her, Lord Jesus. While she was yet in his mother's womb, Lord Jesus, you called her out to be. Before the foundation of the earth, God, you knew her, what her ups and what her downs would be. You knew what her tears would be. You knew what her joys would be, God. You know everything, God. So you have given her everything everything that she's needed, Lord Jesus, to go forth, God, and speak the oracles and the mysteries of you, God. You have given her everything, God, so that she don't have to be afraid of anything, that she don't have to be afraid of nothing, God, but there is no fear in you. You have given her everything, God, that she will truly, truly said that the Lord is good and is, is, is worthy to be praised, God. We give you this woman to God, this hour, God. Let her speak today. We do pray this prayer. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Bless God. Amen. Amen. So we're ready to get started. This is when Christian Speak Talk Radio, today's broadcast is called Here's the Band Abounding Grace with Minister Van. Minister Van, are you ready? Amen. 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 Well, I, I talk. I talk for a little bit. Play some songs or whatever and stuff and find out until we find out what's going on and everything. But I know this is going to be a great word, man. I tell you. You know, I know it's going to be a great word. You know, um, I, while we're waiting for it, I want to talk about his His grace and everything. And uh, just knowing that God's grace is so powerful and so loving and everything, you know, that no matter what we face, that he's always there for us, you know, that we know that we can depend on him. Amen. And look, I want to play this song. This is by Andrew Rose. It's called Be Glorified, Be Magnified. Amen. Be 
Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. God. Bless God. <laughs> Bless God. Praise man. God. We got you. We got breath. Hey, <laughs> Lord, man. God is good. Yes, He God is. is Amen. Good. Praise God. You sound good. Okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's get good. started. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the prayers that have already gone forth, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that this all this technical stuff though, is just a test, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that you're going to get all the honor. Glory and praise right now, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, as we go into this broadcast, Lord God, that you would touch the hearts and minds, Lord God, to receive everything that you have for them right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 All right, brother, you want me to go ahead and get started? Yes, ma'am, please. All right. Faith or fear. This is what we're going to talk about this evening. Faith or fear. From Genesis to Revelation, the Word of God admonishes us to cast away fear, to fear not. And I believe we just had a good test right right a few minutes ago, trying to get this thing straight, you know. Faith, we had the faith. My brother had the faith to know and believe that it's already all right. Amen. I learned a lot from you, bro. (laughs) I tell you, I know from personal experience that fear will paralyze you. Yeah. And when this happens, you can't think rational, you know. You can't think. You um, can't focus. You feel like you're stuck in a no-win situation, praise God. But God, but God, we all know what fear is. We know how it makes us feel. We know how it makes us think. We know how it makes us behave. Fear, what does Webster's Dictionary say about fear? It says anxiety caused by real or possible danger or pain. Oftentimes, probably more often than we care to admit, our fear is caused by the unknown, possible danger. The danger isn't even here, but we become so fearful. And anxiety caused by real or possible danger. You see, spiritually, fear is a trick of the enemy. Yes. It's a trick of the enemy. It's an entrapment keep you from focusing on God, to keep you from trusting God. It's a snare. It's a trap to cause you to take your eyes off of God and stay focused on the problem. Fear is a serious tool used by the enemy to keep you in bondage. If you recall when Peter was in the boat and when Jesus appeared on the water and Peter said, Lord, if it's you, let me come, bid me to come to you. And Jesus told Peter, it's I, come on. And Peter began to walk on the water. Now, how many know it's not natural for man to walk on water? So, see, the point is, as long as Peter kept his eyes focused on Jesus, 
he was able to do what didn't seem natural to do. But the moment Peter took his eyes off God and focused on his surroundings, focused on his problems, and I even imagine that his brothers that were still in the boat said, man, what are you doing? You know it ain't natural for you to be out there walking on water. So as Peter began to listen to the doubt of his brothers and sisters, and I perhaps I think he even started to listen to the winds and the waves, he began yeah. to doubt God himself. Yeah. And the moment Peter doubted God, he took his eyes off of Jesus. And when he took his eyes off Jesus and began to focus on the circumstances, began to focus on his situation, began to focus on what was surrounding him, he began to sink. He began to drown. But God, but the God. moment he said, Lord, help me, Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed him. And yes, that's yes. how it is with us today. When we focus on God, we're okay. When we keep our minds and our attitudes focused, turned towards God, we'd be okay. But the moment we focus on our situation, our circumstances, whatever's going on around us, we lose it. We lose it. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. What is fear? What is fear? Well, I heard someone say a long time ago, fear is false evidence appearing real. Hmm. Fear versus faith. Fear will paralyze you and keep you from moving forward. Faith, on the other hand, will propel you and will position you to receive with joy all that God has for you. Fear is failure to progress. Faith is hope in action. From Genesis to Revelation, we find examples throughout the Bible where God first told his people to fear not. Fear not before he told them anything else. You see, God knew. (laughs) He knew because he made man. So he knew that in order to get man to trust him, before he could get man to go to the next level, Before he could get man to free up his own mind to believe in God, before he could get man to totally trust and depend on him, that old stinking fear had to be dealt with. Mm. So God, being a God of order, first instructs man to fear not. We're going to look at several examples in the Bible. And as we reflect on these examples in the Bible where God had to first um, tell man, fear not, to get his attention, and then we're going to relate that to how we're living today, okay? Yes. You see, mm-hmm. God knew, God knew what that awful spirit of fear would do to man. He knew the very spirit from which it came. God knew that the spirit of fear didn't come from him. It was not a gift bestowed upon his beloved people. One of my favorite scriptures, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, is 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, yes, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And let's yes. personalize that wherever you are this evening, where we say us, you say me, okay? Mm-hmm. For God has For not God. given me the given spirit me. of fear, but of power. Yes, that God. power tells me I am already an overcomer of love because he is the God of love, and of a sound mind. He's let this mind be in you who is also in Christ Jesus. God knew. So all throughout the word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, he instructed man to cast away fear. Genesis 15th chapter. Let's go talk about Abraham a little bit. Actually, in the 15th chapter of of, um, Genesis, um, at this time, Abraham's name was still called Abram. It was later changed to Abraham. Now, in Genesis, the 14th chapter, Abram's nephew Lot had been captured. And God allowed Abram to be victorious in his deliverance. In chapter 15, sometimes after the deliverance of Lot, the Lord made a covenant promise to Abram. He told him, because of your faithfulness, your reward will be great. But God knew that Abram couldn't receive fully from him due to fear and doubt. 
You see, Abram was looking around at his circumstances. Abram was looking around at what he did not have instead of what he had. He knew he was childless. And so Abram thinks to himself, how on earth can I be blessed with so many offspring, so many seeds that I won't even be able to count them? Abram was looking at the current circumstance, the as-is state, if you will. He really hadn't fully grasped what God meant when God created the end before the beginning and knew everything about all his descendants. Yeah. So God, being a God of orders, told Abram, fear not. In Genesis, the 15th chapter, the first verse, the word of God says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Ab- Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thou sheared, and thou exceeding great reward. God is saying to someone this evening, Fear not, my child. I'm your shield. I'm your protector against all enemies, against all odds. I am thou exceeding great reward. Brothers and sisters, don't you know that it's your father's good pleasure to give you the desires of your heart? Fear not, he says. Be still and know that I am God. Talking about the great I am. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You see, it was only after Abraham dealt with the spirit of fear that he was able to truly trust God. Yeah. We've got to deal with this fear. We've got to get rid of it in order to be able to let go and let God. We can't allow our circumstances to control us. You cannot allow your situation, whatever it looks like, to determine your outcome. And understand this. Your past does not define your future. Somebody needs to know that. Regardless of what has happened in your past, regardless of what somebody may have said to you or done to you, regardless of what you may or may not have done, forgiveness is key. And if you've asked God to forgive you, your past is your past, and it does not define or determine your future. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're talking about a God who is faithful and true, so fear not. We're talking about a God who's Alpha, the beginning, and Omega, the end of all things. So fear not. From Genesis to Revelation, the same God that was with Abraham and told him to fear not is the very same God that speaks to us today through his word, through his Holy Spirit. We're talking about a God who knows all, even our thoughts, before we even think them, because he created us, mind soul and body, so we do not have to fear. We're talking about a God who's omnipotent. He has all power and has given us the authority through his son, Jesus Christ, to cast away anything that is not of him. And that's, that clearly includes fear because he didn't give us fear. Amen? Amen. He's given us the authority through his son, Jesus Christ, to cast out all fear so that we can live victoriously, completely trusting in him. We're talking about a God that did not create fear, yet he created opportunities for us to trust him. We're talking about a God that did not give us fear, yet even in the midst of our fear, creates a way for us to escape by trusting him. We're talking about a God who's so loving and so kind and so merciful, who wants us to walk according to the Spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. From Genesis to Revelation, flesh has caused man to mess up. From Genesis to Revelation, flesh will cause man to miss his blessings. Yet God admonishes man throughout all time to fear not. Flesh will cause you to yield to temptation, the temptation to doubt God. The temptation to do your own thing instead of trusting God and knowing and believing that God knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. When we walk in the spirit, we walk according to faith and not by sight. How many know that the five senses would cause you to surround and embrace the spirit of fear? But the spiritual senses, talking about the fruit of the spirit, okay? If you're led by the spirit, You would crucify the flesh, 
allow his wonderful fruit to enable you to embrace faith on those things that pleases him. The flesh desires us to be fearful. The spirit desires us to be faithful. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Mm-hmm. The flesh desires us to be fearful. Yes. The spirit desires us to be faithful. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all about choices. Whose report are we going to believe? Mm-hmm. Whenever we're faced with circumstances, we, be, we can either choose to allow fear to overtake us and cause us to lose out, or, and get this, we can choose to use the authority that has already been vested in us through the blood of Jesus Christ and say to the spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus, yeah. you have no authority here. Therefore, I cast you out. Right now. Right now. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen? Amen. Submit to God first. Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Resist the devil. Satan, you can do absolutely nothing unless God allows it. You've already been defeated, Satan. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper, Satan. I don't have time for your foolishness. So in the name of Jesus, you got to go. You got to go. When you use the authority that has been invested in you, in the name of Jesus, you can resist the devil. When you resist him, you are serving notice that any demonic assignment that Satan has attempted to control you with has got to go. And it's going to vanish swiftly. Amen. Amen. When you use the authority that has been vested in you and the name of Jesus, the devil will leave you quickly, for he has no choice. But thus said the word of God. He cannot linger around in that situation. God's word is still standing. And just like day and night does not mix, fear and faith does not mix. Fear and faith cannot occupy the same space in your life. It just can't happen. Just like right and wrong does not mix, fear and faith does not mix. How can two walk together unless they agree? James 3, 11 says, Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Of course not. Fear and faith do not agree. Brothers and sisters, you're either going to trust him, that's faith, or you're not going to trust him. That's fear. James 1 and 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he shall flee. He cannot stand the name of Jesus. Use the authority that's invested in you. Fear not. And grab a hold of what God has already provided, what he's already invested in you. For the word of God lets us know that we are already overcomers. Praise God. Amen. Already overcomers. Greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. That's authority. In the midst of your problems, in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your circumstances, just start praising him. Just start praising him. When you praise him, you see, in the midst of everything that you're going through, you'll not be able to focus on the negative. Fear simply cannot take up while you're praising God. Have you ever tried that? Have you ever tried to just praise him? And I mean truly praise him from within your spirit, not just, not just with your mouth, but with your heart. Start praising him. I double dare you. When you start praising God, fear has no, no place there. You cannot focus on praising God and on fear at the same time. It just won't work. Praise him for who he is. Praise him for what he's already done in your life, knowing, trusting, and believing that if God did it before, he'll do it again. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Praise the God who is your deliverer, your way maker, your healer. Praise the Lord who is your prince of peace, even in the midst of stuff. Amen. Amen. Faith versus fear. Then thank him for what he's already done. Rely on God's word to sustain you, to motivate you, to propel you, 
in the midst of your situation, meditate on scriptures such as Psalms 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, Reverend Ray. Yes. Whom he yes. has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Go ahead. I dare you to start praising him right now. Wherever you are out there, I dare you to start praising him and thanking him right now. James 1 and 2 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy. Stress for moments, we'll have some. But when you are tempted to give in to fear instead of faith, count it all joy. Don't give in. When your heart starts pounding, and I know from personal experience what I'm talking about right now, and it appears there is no escape, when it appears you are up against a wall and there is no way out, when you are tempted to take matters into your own hands and make a complete mess of things, when things appear to be getting worse instead of better, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Can you imagine how the Israelites felt when they were in the middle, in between their enemies and the Red Sea? The Red Sea was in front of them. That's victory. And the enemy was on the back. That's defeat. I'm sure they were initially overcome with fear, but God didn't leave them in the middle, you see. He made a way of escape for them. Fear not. God has freely given us the authority to be victorious. Amen. The Amen. authority to be victorious. This authority has been given to us so freely. So we need to grab hold of what he's already given us. Jesus tells us in Matthew, the 16th chapter and the 19th verse. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. By yes. the authority that has been vested in me through the name of Jesus Christ, fear not. You've got to move out of my way. Hallelujah. There is no other name on earth that is more powerful than the name of Jesus. There is no other name on earth that is more of a mover and a shaker than the name of Jesus. The word of God lets us know that if we abide in him and let his word abide in us, we can ask anything and it shall be done. That's a promise. That's a promise. Faith or fear. All his promises are yea and amen. All we need to do is refuse to allow fear to control our lives. In every situation, moment by moment, all we need to do is trust him and fear not. All throughout the Bible, when the people were faced with obstacles and fear, God had to remind his people, fear not. From Genesis to Revelation, Genesis 21st chapter, the 17th verse, the word of God says, And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What ailest thou? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Talking about Hagar's son. God heard him crying out in the wilderness. God had a message for Hagar. God had good news for her. God had heard her cries and he cared for her. But he knew her heart was full of fear at that time. And he knew that she couldn't receive from him until she had gotten rid of the fear. He wanted her full attention. So he told her before he told her anything else, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Yes. Fear not. Amen. Fear not. Fear not. Someone here needs to be reminded that God is God and that he hears your every cry. Someone here needs to be reminded that you are too close to the situation so that you can't see the forest for the trees. Someone here needs to be reminded that you are so focused on the circumstances that you're not leaning on God for all your needs to be met. You may be looking through a tunnel right now, and you might not be able to see that light at the end of the tunnel. But don't you know between where you are and that light, God is walking there through right now, walking through that tunnel with you right now. Even as I speak, somebody seems like you're going through a tunnel right now. Even as I speak, where this message is reaching you right now, you feel like, you may feel like all hope is gone. But don't you know there is light at the end of the tunnel? All yes. you got to do is reach up, grab a hold of his hand. His hand, the one who calms the sea, can calm your spirit. Right now, 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, he who has asked to hear, asked to see, can he see? He who has ears to hear, can he hear? He stands up high. He sits high, and he looks low, and he knows all about everything you're going through right now. Someone here needs to be reminded to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Take a pause and just think about this for a minute. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and allow him to direct your path. You may be saying, I don't understand what's going on right now, Lord. How can I trust you? I can't feel you. I can't see you. Lord, I can't even hear your voice right now, Lord God. He says, trust me. Just trust me. Trust me because I said trust me. Trust me because I'm telling you in your, my word, I've said to you, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Someone here needs to be reminded to open up your eyes and see the salvation of the Lord. How many know that your blessing, your breakthrough can be just around the corner, just about to manifest, but your eyes are closed? And you have no idea that God wants you to open your eyes. He needs you to fear not and just trust him. He hears you. He cares for you. And he knows that you feel like you're about to lose it. But you're not. Your blessing, your breakthrough is right there. You just need to start thanking him for what he's already done. And so God opens up her eyes, talking about Hagar, as she saw a well of water and she went, and filled the bottom with water and gave the lad to drink. God is still a God of miracles, isn't he? God is a, still a God that makes a way out of no way. Yes, God he is. is a God that tells us this evening, fear not, neither be discouraged. Get up and take possession of what I've already given you. Get up, shake yourself off, take possession of what I've already given ready given you that's faith it's already all right sometimes you just need to be still be still so that you can hear the voice of god sometimes when life gets so busy we get so busy we get caught up in the moment and we get so busy we can't even hear his voice he's speaking he doesn't stop speaking to us but we the ones that get so busy that we can't hear his voice stop pause Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. the Lord. For this, your troubles you see this day shall be no more. We live in the physical. I get that. But we got to re- realize that God is spiritual. He's not physical. Amen. He's not, Amen. he's not physical. Sometimes we need to stand still so that we can hear the voice of God. And then when he directs you, you'll know when it's time to get up and possess what he's already given you. You may be facing a red sea in your life. Your back may be up against the wall. You may believe it is. But just trust him to part the red sea for you and cause your enemies to be scattered. Fear is an enemy. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, 20th chapter and the 17th verse. I love this. I love this story. I love these scriptures. Second Chronicles 20 and 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself. <laughs> you see why I like this? <laughs> Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. I tell you this evening, you don't need to fight this battle. It's not yours. God has already fought the battle, and he's already won. Amen. Amen. Set yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Set yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Faith or fear. Faith or fear. From Genesis to Revelation, his word serves as a reminder for us to not operate in fear. Isaiah 35, 4 says, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, 
your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense, and he will come and save you. Amen. Genesis to Revelation. Daniel, 10th chapter and the 12th verse. Daniel 10, 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. From the first day thou set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, I heard you. You know, I'm going to digress just a little bit. When you are trusting and believing God, you don't have to keep asking him for the same thing over and over again. You ask him, you believe by faith that it's done. So that's prayer, right? Then your prayer should be a prayer of thanksgiving and praise God for while you wait for the manifestation to take place, you believe and trust in God that it's already done. So when you ask him for something and you believe it, don't ask him for the same thing over and over again. Can you imagine what he must feel, how he must feel when you ask him for something over and over the same thing he's like you're doubting me my child you're doubting me praise me praise my name for i heard you the first time you asked me i heard you so set yourself amen set amen. yourself fear not pray with supplication yes. pray with supplication then continue with thanksgiving for god knows when he wants your blessings to be manifested he knows when you're ready to receive it he knows what you need to grow you up. He knows. Amen. He knows. Mm-hmm. Amen. He knows. Oh, God. So many, so many scriptures are coming to my mind right now when you talk about fear not. Luke 8, chapter and the 50th verse says, But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not. Believe only, and she shall be made whole. Yes. Luke 12, chapter 32. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. Mm-hmm. Revelation, first chapter, 9 through 18. I'm not going to read all of it, okay? It starts off with I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and, and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the hour that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which is, are in Israel. Mm, mm, mm. And then the Holy Spirit showed him so many things, so many things, that the 17th verse says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, guess what he told him? Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth, liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Fear not. For I am the first and the last. From Genesis to Revelation, God's word remains faithful and true. This day, whoever's listening to me right now, choose to embrace faith. For God is a promise keeper. Faith or fear. This day, choose to embrace faith. For Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Faith or fear. This day, choose to embrace faith. For you can draw nigh strength from God. You can draw strength from God. Faith or fear. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Fear not when disturbing things come about in your life. Just be reminded that you have two choices as I come to a close. That you have two choices. You can either allow them to consume you and rob you of your joy. Or you can arise above that situation Believe in the word of God. Wait upon the Lord and live. Amen. Fear not. Instead, bless the Lord at all times. And yes. again, I say rejoice. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Fear not. 
Choose to put faith to work. That's a choice you and only you can make, my brothers and sisters. Fear not. When trouble comes into your life, be confident and believe the report of the Lord. Fear or faith, don't be troubled. Just trust him. Fear not. Be, remember the comforter is here to comfort you, to comfort you. Amen. He is a comforter. Yes, faith or fear. Didn't God promise he would never leave us, never forsake us? So whatever might come next, remember you're never alone. And the same God that brought you through yesterday, through last week, through last month, through last year, is the same God that's going to sustain you even now. For we know that God promised us that the Holy Spirit will abide in us forever. We've got to get into a position where we just stand on his word. We all miss it sometimes. I know I do. I know I do. I know I do. We Amen. sometimes give in to this fear, fear of the unknown. We give in, but while faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, but sometimes we are afraid to hope. We are afraid to trust in that what we don't know. Faith or fear, I'm talking from personal experience, faith or fear, choose ye this day, whatever might come next. It doesn't matter whether it's loneliness or heartache. Stand on God's promises. Faith or fear, doesn't matter what comes next. If Satan tries to break your spirit, you just tell him, you think I'm going to crumble, but I'm not. For the word of God sustains me. For the word of God sustains me. Yes, I may be leaning, but I'm still standing, praise God. Faith Amen. or fear. I'm going to get discouraged sometimes. I'm going to get discouraged sometimes. But I choose to stand on the word of God. Faith yeah. or fear. Just let go and let God. The next time you're faced with a situation that seems impossible for you to handle, don't. Just shrug your shoulders and say, I don't have to handle this. God's already parted my Red Sea. I'm going to trust him in the nighttime. I'm going to trust him in the daytime. I'm not going to live in fear anymore. The next time you think you're about to get a little bit worn down, just a tad bit weary, just a little distressed, don't. Just shrug your shoulders, stand up firm and say, I don't have to handle this one. But it is written, he who takes care of the sparrow will absolutely take care of me. Yeah. The next time, don't. Just hold your head up high and shout, I don't have to handle this one because Jesus got my back. Amen. Don't Amen. you worry. Don't you fret. God is yet faithful. Fear not. Just trust him for he will surely bring you out. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Redeemed from the spirit. I am redeemed from the spirit of deception. I am redeemed from the curse. And because my rede redeemer yet lives, I will rejoice and wait patiently for my blessing. Because my redeemer yet lives, I will rejoice and look forward to see what the end is going to be. Because my redeemer yet lives and all of his promises are yea and amen, I'm going to stand on them. I'm not going to yield to temptation. I'm not going to yield to sin. I'm not going to live in fear, for fear is doubting God. I will not be moved by my circumstances, for it is written, as have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for me. Amen. I praise God. I hope this message, I hope this word has been carried to you, to you this evening. I hope and trust that you will trust it, take it. Believe God, stand firm, stand still, and just see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. Again, you've been listening to When Christian Speak Talk Radio. This broadcast has been His Abounding Grace with Minister Van. You can listen to it in its entirety. If you go back to Blog Talk Radio slash When Christian Speak and click on the link. Also, you can listen to it on our actual website, which is com. We do have links on Facebook. And, of course, we're on iTunes and iHeart and, and Spreaker.com. Amen. But this has been a blessing. I want to thank Minister Van for bringing forth the great word about fear, man, you know, and uh, fear and faith. And we need to hear that and need to rehearse that over and over in, um, in, our, in our lives. I do want to remind you that we do have another broadcast coming up on Thursday, declaring the finished work with Reverend Pat Randall at 12 noon. And then on Friday, we have Friday Night Joy with myself. And I, I do have a guest coming on. It's B.J. Gianni. Amen. 
uh, BJ Gianni, and then she would be with us at 7 p.m. She would be talking about the different things that God is doing in her life. She's an actor, she's a model, she's a mom, and she's a businesswoman. So she would be sharing a lot of different things with us, and we are looking excited uh, for that. She does also work with a lot of the youth uh, for those that want to get into the uh, the arts and that kind of thing. Her website is called Talented Young Folks dot com. That's the name of her business, Talented Young Folks. Amen. So we're looking forward to hear from BJ talking with her and let her allowing her to just speak some things into our life and to share some of the things that she's doing on Friday, February the twentieth. Then of course we have the broadcast on Sunday. Amen. Called Stronger Together with Valerie Miller and myself. That's at 7 p.m. And, of course, the Alabaster Box with Prophet Carla Johnson. That's every fourth Saturday at 7 p.m. Please continue to um, like us on Facebook uh, and on iTunes and the different media that we're on. R- remember that we have a couple of apps on our, on, on our website. When Kristen speak, there are apps for your smartphone and your sa- smart tablet for, and um, anything else you got out there. So we've been blessed. We will see you again probably on, on Thursday with Reverend Pat. We're going to let um, Re- Minister Van close us out in prayer and any Amen. last things that she wants to give out. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you to keep on keeping on. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word that's gone forth. You said in your word that when it goes forth, it will never, never, never return unto you void, but would it go out and accomplish that which you would have it to accomplish. We thank you, Lord God, that this word has reached who you have seen fit for it to reach, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness, Lord God. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, forevermore for the best is still yet to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all be blessed. Be, thanks, Mr. Van. Great word. Appreciate yeah, it, you. you. Always. Love you, love you, love you, love you. God bless you. <laughs> Y'all be blessed, man. Stay encouraged. Be safe. As I always say before, and always, you know, if you're feeling depressed or suicidal, please get help. Don't try to do this by yourself. Call down 911. Call somebody. Call a family member. Whatever you got to do, but don't try to go through it by yourself. God wants you to live and not die. This is Reverend Ray Amen. and Minister Van. We are signing Amen. out. God bless. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. You say-